Late for work again. Traffic in Cologne. It's so terrible, I swear. I'm coming with the bike tomorrow, I swear. Today's video is on my take on how to make or how to find your career in biomechanics. I will give you my seven practical tips. And if you watch the video until the end, there's a little bonus tip for you. But before we start, let's go to the office and grab a coffee first. Hey Fred! Morning! Morning. This is my take on how to find your career in biomechanics. Seven practical tips plus one bonus tip. Um, first of all, this is a very subjective video, so I'm giving my opinion on the things and you could have a different opinion on it. If you're having a different opinion on how to make your career or how to find your job, how to find your place in biomechanics, just type it in the comments below and be friendly. Biomechanics has expanded so much in the past, let's say, 10 to 15 years. I started in biomechanics in 2003 at the university. I was really interested in yeah, biomechanics, anatomy, sports medicine. Since then, I could see how biomechanics developed. What are the fields of application that you could work in? Well, traditionally, biomechanics has been a field that has been related to academia, to the university research institutions. But over the past 10 to 15 years, it has developed so much. It has been expanded. It opened new job fields and there are still new job profiles to be established. So let's have a look at where you could work in biomechanics or where you could make your career. First of all, academia. Very traditionally, university, you could aim at becoming a lecturer or even a professor. This is also still possible and the positions so that the professorships in biomechanics have increased over the past years and there will be even more professorships in, in the future that are related to biomechanics. Another job that is related to the academia, to the university is being a lab manager. Over the past years, I've seen so many positions coming up where university decided to have a fixed lab engineer in the lab. And if you're interested in technology, biomechanical measure te measurement technology, in um, supporting studies, in conducting studies, then this is, yeah, this is an opportunity for you. One field that is still related to uh, the academia are the gate labs. Gate labs at hospitals, gate lab in uh, university hospitals. Gate labs often do research on one hand, so it's related to academia. And on the other hand, they provide a clinical service, gate analysis. And this is where biomechanics becomes very relevant because it helps to improve treatment decisions and therapeutic decisions. Then a next field could be the uh, biomechanical service, like a clinical biomechanical service. If you have watched our video with Tanya Esser from the IFD, you will see that they offer a clinical biomechanical analysis service, but it's not related to any research institution or it's not related to any hospital. They drive the clinical analysis service themselves and make money with it and make a living from it. Then a next field to work in could be industry. You could be working in R&D, help developing new equipment, technology, 
You could be working in ergonomics in the industrial field, workplace ergonomics, but also product ergonomics. What's becoming a big, big field for biomechanics is sports performance and elite sports. You can see it more and more. Traditionally, the Olympic training centers have used biomechanics in order to analyze the performance of their athlete. But what we see more and more is that, for instance, larger soccer clubs, larger elite sports clubs, they are interested in biomechanical analysis. This offers a lot of job opportunities and we see them coming up more and more. So you see there are a lot of job opportunities out there in the field of biomechanics and it doesn't have to be necessarily academia and university. There will be more and more jobs being related to biomechanics. I'm very sure you will find the job that is tailored to your preferences, to your liking. And if not, there are still opportunities to creating your job. My personal seven practical tips on how to find your career in biomechanics. First of all, tip number one, most important one, be passionate. Be passionate about biomechanics. And this is nothing that you can force. If you're watching this video, you're quite likely passionate about biomechanics because you're interested in biomechanics and you feel a passion for it. You want to learn about biomechanics. And this is the essence that you really need in order to make your living with biomechanics or make a, even make a career in biomechanics. If you have watched our mocap lab talk videos, you will see that the people that we have interviewed are all passionate about biomechanics. And 100% this is how they found their job because they were passionate about biomechanics. And in the end, this passion for biomechanics helped them to get into the position that they're having now. Practical tip number two, share your passion. Well, first of all, it's important to be passionate, but in the next step, share your passion, communicate it, talk about it, ask people questions and show that you are passionate and interested. You will be seeing our video with Taneko Palmans in a couple of weeks. And it's very interesting how she got into her position. She was studying biomechanics and she was attending a meeting and was sharing her passion, was talking about it, that she loves motion capture, that she's into biomechanics. And someone heard her talking about it. And in the end, a few weeks later, that lady called her and offered her a position. And it's not only that she got a position offered, she could also tailor the position to her needs. And she is still having that position. How cool is that? This is just because she shared her passion. Practical tip number three. The first two tips were a bit more on the soft skill side. And this tip is like really hard learning. Learn the basics. Learn the biomechanical basics. If you want to succeed in biomechanics, you have to make sure that you know all the basics. Make sure that you have your basics in mechanics, anatomy, a little bit of engineering, a little bit of biology, the principles of mechanical loading and load response, adaptation to load. When I studied biomechanics 15 years ago, my professor Peter Brüggemann told me, you have to read this book first before you do anything in biomechanics. So I did. It was Benonik and Walter Herzog, Biomechanics of the Musculoskeletal System. I made sure that I read this book and I learned a lot from it, a lot on the basics of EMG, kinematics, kinetics, inverse dynamics, adaptation to mechanical loading. It's not that I understood everything, but this book helped me a lot. And it doesn't have to be this book. There are so many great textbooks out there that can provide you with a good start in biomechanics. So make sure you learn your basics. Practical tip number four. Once you have mastered your basics, make sure to become an expert in at least one field of biomechanics. This field of biomechanics could be EMG, signal processing, analysis of EMG data, kinematics, calculation of inverse dynamics, uh, setting up marker models, for instance. If you are becoming an expert in one or more fields in biomechanics, you will be referred to as the go-to person for this specific field. This will help you with your networking, not only in your institute, in your direct environment, but also in corporations, in interdisciplinary corporations, for instance. And this will bring me to the next step. Tip number five. Transfer your expert knowledge into an interdisciplinary field. For instance, if your expertise is in sports biomechanics, you can transfer that specific knowledge into sports performance. This knowledge can, can help you to support trainers, to support clubs, 
to support therapists to bring back their athletes to the performance or even enhance their performance with biomechanical methods. If your expertise is in musculoskeletal loading, you can transfer that knowledge into the field of orthopedics. You can help medical doctors, surgeons to implement biomechanical methods, your biomechanical methods into their diagnostics. Since biomechanics is expanding into so many fields, psychology, robotics, neurology, gerontology, there are so many more and even the applied fields of sports performance, of rehabilitation and therapy. Having an expertise in one specific field will help you to become a biomechanics expert in the interdisciplinary field. Practical tip number six. Make sure to connect to a biomechanical community, whatever this community is. If it's a research community like the ISB, it could also be a more applied community like a gate research community. Here in Germany, we have the Gamma. On European level, it's the SMAC. Be consistent in attending the conferences. Could be consistent in building up a network within that community. And you could also try to be active and proactive within the community. If you have watched our video with Gerda and Tony, you will see that they stick to one community or over a long period of time. So with Gerd, it was the ISBS. In 2006, she was co-hosting the conference and still in 2019, she is part of the community. She has a role in the community and she is guiding the further development of that community. With Tony, it's the same. He's always been active in the ISB community. And what happened? He's hosting the next ISB conference. And that really helps to build up your network, to build up your position within that network and also be interactive with other networks. So connect to a biomechanical community if it's research or applied and make sure that you are consistent in following up with that community. Just one more comment on the biomechanics community thing. I've just recently been to the German Society of Biomechanics and I joined the uh, general assembly of the society and typically there are a lot of elections for different positions and one of the most unattractive positions at least from my perspective is the cash auditor of the society no one was actually willing to take that position but there was this new guy that was new to the community and he showed up and said I can do it you know what happened everybody knew him afterwards everybody was grateful that he did that job and he's a part of the society now. How cool is that? What a nice little move to become an active part of the society. Tip number seven. Practical tip number seven is finish, but don't stop asking questions. If you look at PhDs, if you look at professors, one thing that you will notice is that they don't stop asking questions. They are just curious, curious about biomechanics, they are just curious about their field of expertise and related fields. And if you are being curious and you're asking questions, this will always help you to get more knowledge in your field, to get more knowledge in related fields and to meet new people and listen to them. People are in their positions because they are passionate about it. And if you're passionate about something and someone asks you a question about it, you are quite willing to share your passion and information. So make sure to not stop asking questions. And what do I mean with finish and don't stop asking questions? This is actually two tips in one. Finish what you started. So if you started your masters, finish your masters. I started a PhD in biomechanics. I have never finished because I started my job and I had kids coming and um, I will finish at some point. But it would have helped me if I had finished it until now. So if you start a project, make sure to finish it and it will open new doors for you. So be curious, never stop asking questions, but finish what you've started. Here's the little bonus tip. It's 2019, it's not 2005 anymore, it's not 1999 and it's not even 2010, it's 2019 and the world has changed. Everything has become more global, more digital, more interactive. Make sure to use the modern ways of communication. There are so many opportunities out there to spread the message that you want to share. 
If you, for instance, have achieved something or if you have published a paper, just make a little post or a little video and share what your outcome is, what your benefit to the research community is. Why don't you just share it? It might be that you sit in Germany and someone in Australia watches your video and thinks, oh, this really provides me with a benefit and I can learn from it. And maybe you can get in contact with that person and you can share knowledge, you can share experiences. And that might even end up with you going to Australia and doing some parts of your next study or someone from Australia coming over to Germany. So use the digitalization and the globalization. Make sure to use the benefits that our fast and quick, sometimes overloaded communication has, but it has benefits to it and you can use them to your advantage. Thank you very much for watching this video until the end and I hope my practical tips on how to make a career in biomechanics provided some benefit for you. If you want to see more videos like that or our mocap lab talks with experienced mocap users and biomechanists, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell and you get notified every time a new video is online. I'm out. All right, let's talk about my personal seven. <laughs> no. All right, all right, let's talk about my personal seven practical. Gula oder Gulasch? Ich habe schon überlegt, aber ich bin da für Essen und das Kein Problem, oder? Eigentlich nicht. Würdet ihr beide Gulasch nehmen? Ich hab Gulasch. Hier. Ich hab's nicht selber. Ich würde Gulasch nehmen, ja. Hier Tipps von Ladyfair Nummer 20. <lacht> Besser nicht so aussehen. Geil. Wie bist jetzt in Fernsehen drin? Ich weiß nicht, ob ich das Buch bin, weil man so weit spricht. Wie kostet es im Fernsehen?